I'm kind of nervous. And I don't know why. No one's watching me. Hola! My name is Alexandria Cibrian with a Z and an I. They're very significant. She can call me Alex. Oh, yeah, she is. She, 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 she get it from a <laughs> Turn it up, Mimi. I can't hear it. <laughs> Yeah. Holland is a really, really small town. Everybody knows everybody. People protect one another here because many of them are related by family. I've had a pretty simple childhood, I think, for the most part, besides like the behind the scenes stuff. I moved around a few times, but I ended up living with my band director and her family for most of my high school. Hello? Hello, ma'am. Hey, Dad. Hey, uh, well, let me know when you're in, because I'm going to be in Holland tomorrow morning for the parade, and then I'll okay, be there. Okay, yeah. yeah, so let me know when you're over there getting your stuff, and I'll come get my stuff. Last night's dream left me a bit traumatized today. I dreamed that for some reason my dad and I were going to sleep in the same bed, but on opposite ends. My dad brought his face close to my ear and I flinched and he backed away and looked at me with a surprised smirk and said, I really have something to tell you. And so I calmed myself as he leaned in again. He sensually licked my ear. The very first time I remember it happening, we were living at my aunt's house in Academy. I was like three or four years old and I was on the floor and I just woke up to my dad on top of me. I pretended like I was asleep still, and he was like grinding on me. And um, I can't remember, I think my clothes were off, and his were off. I really can't tell you exactly when I knew. I never really knew, knew. I love her mother. I think Michelle tries to be a good person. She just could never get on her feet without the drugs. But Michelle knew what was going on. She darn well knew what was going on in that house. I mean, I don't want to sit here and, and blame, blame Victor and blame Victor and blame Victor because, I mean, there was, I mean, I should have been stronger. I, I didn't do what a mother should do. Do you ever blame yourself, like, every day for that? <laughs> A child in Alex's situation, uh, there's several things that they will do. Uh, the first being they would actually perpetrate on other children, have very sexualized behaviors, and need intensive therapy. Uh, another thing that occurs is perfectionism, which I think in Alex's case is what happened. Uh, they try to be perfect in their life to mask their shame and guilt and to not let on to other people that they have been abused or are in an abusive situation. She didn't fit in with her mom and her dad and her brother. She just didn't fit in, but she could have been, she could have fit in. She'd have fallen with them, you know, fallen in the crowd. I should never have left my kids. I never should have left them. I would, I would have left. I'd probably go back. I would have taken them with me. There was a time when Alex was living with me that at the apartment complex, Victor raped a child. We knew he raped her. She said he raped her, and um, someone had called CPS. It was not me that time. I did not call CPS. Someone had called CPS, and Alex needed to go and uh, interview with CPS, so I took her in. My dad had told me to keep something a secret, so I was going to keep it a secret, and I didn't want to tell anybody. She was proud of herself for not telling me. That time, all she wanted to do was protect him. 
She loves her dad. She didn't want to hurt him. I think that whenever he wants something, he just keeps going for it, keeps going for it, keeps going for it. And then uh, I think if he doesn't get handed to him, then he probably takes it. Who knows how many people he's hurt. I mean, I was 12, 13. I had one friend out of many that he molested. It could be argued that he became involved with Alex's mother uh, to victimize her children and her future children. He uh, manipulates situations in his favor. He appears to be narcissistic, which classifies him as a classic sociopath. So if you go in there, I'll serve you for Father's Day. <laughs> I'll hook you up with some unlimited chips and salsa. She happened to be living with a monster who manipulated her and used her and abused her trust to satisfy his, his own needs. I saw my dad today and I saw his girlfriend. That girl is younger than me. Like she's 20 years old and she's pregnant with my dad's baby. I'm not happy about my dad's choices, but I can't help but like love him. He's my dad. The fact that Victor is expecting a child actually should be a red flag for uh, CPS authorities. If there are people making outcries uh, of sexual abuse against him, um, that mother, by staying involved in a relationship with Victor would be placing that child at risk. I remember when I was in seventh grade and I thought I, my life was worthless, that no guy would ever want to marry me because of what my dad had done to me. I was just telling him like, you know, I feel like my life is over. Like there's no, I don't, you know, there's no point of my life right now. And my dad was just like, he, and this is another reason that I know my dad is sick, like he needs help, is because he told me, he's like, I thought we had a different kind of love. And I was like, no, you're my dad. You're supposed to be my dad. It's, there's no different kind of love, like you're my dad. But he thought that it was like a relationship type love, like a romantic kind of love. And so that was really weird. And hopefully. Hopefully charges will come against him. She always had a faith in Jesus. She always, she always, she always inspired me. And I was the adult. And I was supposed to be the, I was supposed to be inspiring her. She did, she always did. Because no matter how, you know, even when he abused her, she, she, she trusted that God would take care of her, that he knew what he was doing and might have killed him. You know, in my professional opinion, she should sever all ties with her father. I don't know, I guess this whole documentary thing has been getting me to think about my dad and everything all over again. Where's my relationship with my dad right now? It's definitely weird, especially compared to how it had been in past years. My dad and I were really close, you know, like I would go to him and talk to him about problems that I'd have and I would feel totally comfortable around him. And now I just um, feel kind of weird in his presence. Of course I'm gonna move forward in life and you know, pursue dreams and do things that I wanna do and I'm, not going to let any of this hold me back, but I just wonder if I'll ever be okay. I just have a hope, you know, I just have this hope that everything will be okay someday. And I'm not going to feel uncomfortable around older men forever. And maybe I'm a dreamer, and any realist will tell me that I'm going to be suffering for the rest of my life, but I just don't believe that. And 
it's gonna be a thorough freedom. I'm gonna be thoroughly liberated. I believe that because God is awesome.